Excavators have found artifacts that reveal what happened to the more than 120 men, women, and children who vanished from the lost colony of Roanoke. The settlers arrived on North Carolina's Roanoke Island. They all vanished within three years. All they left behind were only two clues. The word Croatoan carved into a fort's gatepost and crow etched into a tree, giving Roanoke a lot of credit for being one of America's great mysteries. Did this colony vanish from devastating disease or a violent attack by local North American tribes? What new artifacts have scientists found? Join us as we explore what has just been discovered about the lost colony of Roanoke Island, which shocked everyone. On May 8, 1587, approximately 120 settlers departed from England and sailed to Roanoke Island, located off the coast of present-day North Carolina, arriving sometime in July 1587. John White, an explorer and artist, served as the governor of the new settlement. Within the first month, there were a few minor attacks from local Native Americans, prompting the colonists to urge White to return to England for more supplies, such as food, tools, and additional settlers. Consequently, on August 25, 1587, just a month after their arrival, White sailed back to England, leaving behind 115 colonists, 87 men, 17 women, and 11 children, including his own daughter, Elnor White Dare who had recently given birth to his granddaughter, Virginia Dare, the first English child born in North America. What point exactly did these people disappear? This is just the beginning. Stay tuned for more interesting details. Unfortunately, White's departure coincided with England's preparations for war with Spain, which possessed a formidable armada. This delayed his return to Roanoke. It wasn't until August 1590, three years later, that White finally made his way back to the island. To his astonishment, the colony had vanished without a trace, except for the word Croatoan carved into a fence post and crow carved into a tree. Given these clues, one might wonder why the settlers did not leave more detailed information. White attempted twice to sail about 50 miles south to nearby Croatoan Island, now Hatteras Island, to search for the colonists. However, both attempts were thwarted by storms, forcing him to return back. Lacking the resources to attempt a third journey, White returned to England and eventually moved to Ireland, where he died in 1593, never knowing the fate of his family. To this day, the fate of the lost colony of Roanoke remains a mystery. Despite the disappearance of 115 people, no bodies or signs of a mass grave have ever been found. Historians have proposed various theories over the centuries, and many people have speculated about supernatural causes. Archaeologists have uncovered possible evidence of the lost colony of Roanoke, North Carolina, in the form of two European pottery pieces near a site where the colonists settled in the 1580s. According to the Virginian pilot, the researchers believe the pottery fragments may belong to a medicine jar of Thomas Harriet, an important member of one of the expeditions, or another colonist. The potential ointment, or medicine jar, was approximately 3 inches tall and 1.5 inches in diameter making it the most significant pottery found in the area since the 1490s, according to Eric Dietz, who's an archaeologist with the First Colony Foundation. Dietz suggested that Harriet, or members of the colony, might have used the jar to mix ointments or medicines. One potential herbal remedy they could have utilized was sassafras, which was abundant on Roanoke Island and believed to treat syphilis and other ailments. Eric Klingelhofer and Nick Lucchetti the Foundation's Research Vice President collaborated with archaeologist Ivor Noel Hume, and the team discovered the 1585-86 Laboratory of Scientist Thomas Harriet and metallurgist Joachim Gand, who worked with copper and other materials near the earthworks at Roanoke. Further explorations nearby uncovered evidence of charcoal making, a brick kiln, and 16th century English artifacts. This made Klingelhofer emphasize that the site they discovered was a work site and not a residential area. They further planned to reconstruct the workshop on paper by piecing together bits of evidence, analyzing soil features, and comparing findings to past discoveries. The project, funded by donations and grants, was delayed nearly two years due to the pandemic. However, Klingelhofer explained that they are looking for the exterior elements to the site, such as an enclosure, fence, or a ditch and understanding where these features end. But that's not all. In one of the two excavated units across the pathway from the earthworks, 
a significant disturbance was revealed. According to Eric Dietz, site director and research associate with the foundation, they dug deeper than expected for Fort Rally, period material, and found the hole filled with large pieces of asphalt and aggregate. It should be noted that before becoming a national park, the area had substantial commercial infrastructure that was later removed. Dietz pointed out that much archaeological work involves a process of elimination, and they chose these two areas because they had not been previously excavated, although adjacent units had been explored. Additional work is planned to investigate anomalies detected earlier in the area of the earthworks and to conduct some shovel testing in a few interesting spots in the nearby woods. All of these points to the possibility of the traces of the colonists. Also, two teams of archaeologists, one working 50 miles south of Roanoke on Hatteras Island and the other on the North Carolina mainland 50 miles west of Roanoke, have found evidence suggesting that at least some of the colonists moved to these locations after their original settlement is believed to have collapsed. Both sites have yielded European artifacts from the late 16th century. These archaeologists discovered several European artifacts on Hatteras Island, where the Croatoan tribe resided. These included broken bowls from England, the hilt of a 16th century English rapier sword, a writing tablet made of slate possibly bearing the letter M, and aglets, which are small copper tubes used to secure wood fibers. The sword hilt would have belonged to an Englishman of high standing, and the writing tablet would have been used by educated upper-class Europeans. These findings suggest the presence of colonists from the same period and class as those of Roanoke. However, most European artifacts on Hatteras Island date back to the 17th century, about a hundred years after the Roanoke colony's disappearance. This theory could also explain the Croatoan carving left by the settlers as a clue to their whereabouts. Moreover, Malcolm Lecomte of Elizabeth City State University employed ground penetrating radar, also known as GPR, to investigate the fate of Roanoke's lost colonists. The study began with a satellite survey, followed by the analysis of historical maps to compare changes in the landscape over time. Using GPR, which sends radio waves into the ground to detect buried objects, Lecomte and his team identified potential buried structures, possibly wooden, about three feet underground. They speculate that these structures may have collapsed over time, leaving impressions in the surrounding soil. To confirm their findings, the Museum of the Alla Marble suggested using a proton magnometer, which detects objects up to 13 feet deep by measuring magnetic field distortions. Despite these efforts, the technologies have not shed light on the role of Native American populations in the area. The search for the fate of the English settlers has recently focused on the Elizabethan gardens in the town of Manteo, where archaeologists have uncovered evidence of a farmstead belonging to the Algonquin village of Roanoke, an indigenous community that had hosted the settlers in 1584. Excavations in March 2024, following discoveries in 2023, revealed shards of Algonquin pottery dating back to the 1500s, along with a ring of drawn copper wire likely worn by an Algonquin warrior. Archaeologists believe the ring was brought to North America by the English settlers and traded to the indigenous people, who considered copper spiritually significant. Finding domestic pottery, the type used for cooking, near an apparent piece of Native American jewelry, according to Dr. Eric Klingelhofer, Vice President of Research at the First Colony Foundation, strongly confirmed that they were digging in the midst of a settlement and Roanoke is the only known village at that site. He further stated that the copper ring indicates contact with the English. Previous excavations suggest that the village had a palisade with around nine internal houses for the elite warrior class. While those of lower status or working class lived outside the palisade on farmsteads raising crops, Klingelhofer stated that the new finding confirmed a theory that aligns with what we know of the village. It was described as a palisaded village by the explorers who recorded it. And these findings add to our understanding. Another exploration is scheduled for the summer of 2024 at the nearby Fort Rally National Historic Site aiming to find evidence of the colonists' original statement. Fort Raleigh National Historic Site protects and preserves known parts of England's first New World settlements from 1584 to 1590. 
The site also preserves the cultural heritage of the Native Americans, European Americans, and African Americans who have lived on Roanoke Island. What are the explanations that experts have given? Keep watching to find out. Similar to many unresolved mysteries, like the construction of the pyramids in Stonehenge, the disappearance of Roanoke has spawned a multitude of improbable explanations. The popular television show American Horror Story even dedicated an entire season to a Roanoke conspiracy theory, focusing on supernatural intervention. Despite the many fanciful explanations for the settlers' disappearance, the more commonly accepted academic theory is based on the etchings on the posts and trees. Croatoan was the name of a Native American tribe found in modern-day North Carolina and Virginia, leading historians to believe that a negative relationship between the Native Americans and settlers may have contributed to the disappearance. According to Roanoke Island's tourist website, thelostcolony.com, Croatoan American Indians accused the Roanoke Americans of killing the 15 men left by the settlers. This suggests that a conflict between the groups may have led to the settlers' disappearance. The first explanation is that the settlers were killed by a local Native American tribe. An earlier attempt to colonize Roanoke Island between 1585 and 1586 by the English ended when the colonists returned to England after experiencing attacks from some Native Americans and facing a food shortage. Ralph Lane, the governor of the first Roanoke colony, was not known for his diplomacy with the Native Americans. He even killed Wingina, the king of the local tribe to prevent an uprising against the colonists. This led Sir Francis Drake to rescue the colonists and bring them back to England. About a year later, in 1587, a different group of English colonists returned and subsequently vanished. However, as mentioned, no mass graves or a significant number of bodies have ever been found to support the idea that over a hundred people were murdered. The second explanation is that the English settlers joined and assimilated with a nearby friendly Native American tribe. One possible intermediary was Manteo, a Native American who traveled to England in 1584 and made a second year-long trip between the two Roanoke expeditions. In 1587, Manteo sailed back to Roanoke with John White and the new colonists, spending nine months with them on the Atlantic journey. After his return, Manteo was baptized and John White declared him the chief of the Roanoke and Croatoan tribes, whom the English called the Croatans. However, Manteo was only from the Croatan tribe and had no authority over the Roanoke tribe. Consequently, he returned to Croatoan Island with his people and may have later returned to Roanoke to take the colonists with him to Croatoan Island. In 1888, 54 Croatoan Native Americans petitioned Congress for aid, claiming to be descendants of White's lost colony. The directors of the Ethnological Bureau responded, noting that traces of white blood, such as gray eyes, could be found among the Indians. They suggested that while most colonists were likely killed, some, particularly women and children, might have been captured and incorporated into the tribe. This leads us to the third explanation, which says that the lost colonists didn't move to Croton, but instead relocated inland. According to Lucchetti's team's findings, it is believed that after White departed, the Roanoke colonists potentially relocated inland to reside with Native American allies, with these artifacts potentially being part of their possessions. John White, the governor of Roanoke, was also an artist and a member of the original failed Roanoke expedition. Between 1585 and 1593, he created a detailed watercolor map titled La Virginia Pars, which shows the North Carolina coast and includes both Roanoke and Croatoan Islands, marked in red. This map is considered extremely accurate, described by museum experts as the most careful, detailed piece of cartography for any part of North America to be made in the 16th century. When compared to modern satellite imagery, the only differences are the naturally changing shapes of the coastline. This explains why, in 2012, the nonprofit organization First Colony Foundation requested that the British Museum re examine two small patches on the map. Using patches to cover mistakes or damage was a common technique in 16th century map making, as maps took considerable time and effort to create, making it impractical to start over. Using X ray spectroscopy, 
infrared light and other imaging techniques, the British Museum determined that one patch covered a four-pointed star outlined in blue and filled in with red. According to the British Museum's report, while the detailed interpretation of this symbol is beyond the scope of the study and is best left to experts in the field, it seems certain to represent a fort or fortification. This suggests that the star may indicate the location of a fort inland from Roanoke Island on the western side of Abelmarle Sound, where the colonists could have resettled. But it gets even more mysterious. Adding to the mystery, closer examination revealed faint markings of this potential fort atop the patch. According to the British Museum's report, these markings have faded over time. However, the report also suggests a more romantic possibility. The lines might have been made with invisible ink, which could be revealed by applying heat, as demonstrated in the film National Treasure. Such invisible markings could be achieved using substances like milk or lemon juice. Some speculate that White wanted to conceal the colony's location from the English court, which might have contained spies. Whatever the marks indicate, this evidence supports the theory that the settlers could have left Roanoke Island for this inland location. Interestingly, John White himself made an indirect reference to a location 50 miles inland from Roanoke Island in his account of his return. To further support this possible explanation above, Excavations at this site have uncovered evidence of Europeans, including Surrey, Hampshire, borderware, a type of ceramics continued soon after Jamestown in 1624, and aglets, copper tubes used before the early 17th century to secure wood fibers. While these findings strongly suggest a connection to the Roanoke colonists, they can't be definitively dated to the exact time frame. Even if it is eventually confirmed that the colonists moved inland or to Croton Island, many questions remain unanswered. Why did they leave Roanoke Island? And what happened to them afterwards? Since no definitive evidence of any of the 115 lost colonists has been documented since August 25, 1587, some have even speculated supernatural causes. This brings us to our fourth explanation that the colonists' disappearance was an instance of mass abduction by aliens. Some believe this could explain why their bodies were never discovered. If Croatoan was a clue to their destination, why did the colonists leave more substantial evidence such as a note or a map? Perhaps they left the island in haste and not of their own volition. Surprisingly, the alien abduction theory isn't the most outlandish one. Andre Freeman from the Zombie Research Society proposes that a zombie outbreak could explain the swift disappearance. He suggests that a sudden undead plague sweeping through the unprepared colony would quickly become a horrific violent feast, leaving not a single man, woman, or child alive. Since Roanoke was an island, it could have contained the infection within its shoreline. Before dismissing this entirely, Consider that Harvard archaeologist Lawrence Steger claims to have found evidence suggesting mass cannibalism on Roanoke. Given that Roanoke experienced the most severe drought in 800 years, some argue that this evidence points to starvation-induced cannibalism rather than zombies. Today, Roanoke Island, located in Dare County off the coast of North Carolina, USA, sits south of Albemarle Sound between the Outer Banks and the mainland. This island, the site of the first attempted English settlement in North America and the birthplace of Virginia Dare, the first child born to English parents in the New World, derives its name from the Algonquin language, likely meaning northern people or place where shell beads are found. Its name honors the historical Roanoke, a Native American tribe of the Carolina Algonquin group which lived there during the 16th century when English colonization began. Roanoke Island is a national historic site, dating back to England's first permanent colony in 1584 and goes beyond the story of the lost colony. It also covers Native American history, the Civil War era, and the Underground Railroad. Admission is free and facilities include restrooms, a small museum with 16th century artifacts, a theater showing an engaging orientation film, and restored Fort Rally foundations. In the end, the mystery of Rona continues to baffle. Did the colonists simply relocate, perhaps joining a neighboring tribe? Were they killed 
due to tensions with the locals? Drop your thoughts in the comment section. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to our channel for more interesting content. Click the next video on your screen to enjoy another interesting content.